Hey, good morning, guys. Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire today. Video number four about how to make it to retirement as a teacher. Okay, you want longevity in your teaching career. You want to be able to make it to that retirement age. So let's look at some of the things. I've already had three videos uh, prior to this where I talked about what are some things that you can do that can help you make it all the way to retirement. And uh, just some practical things that, you know, just help you have a better chance because it's gonna to be tough. Uh, sometimes it's tougher than others, but there are, some, there are some things you can do that are gonna help you out. So today for number four, what I, what I call this one is idealistic and realistic. You wanna be idealistic and realistic. You can't be 100% all realistic. You gotta be a little idealistic, okay? Uh, if you're not the kind of person that can, you know, look at a kid and think, you know what, I can teach them, I can reach this student. Uh, I, you have to be a little idealistic about the subject that you teach and, you know, it needs to be important to you. It needs to matter. You know, you need to think that you're making a difference. You need to think, you know, all those things are gonna help you. Uh, I, I don't see how a person can teach if they're not idealistic, you know, if they're not, um, you know, thinking about making things better, you know, and things like that. So you, you need that, okay? That, that has to be part of your DNA as a teacher. But you also need a heavy dose of, of being realistic. If you are too idealistic, you're going to have some issues. It's going to make it hard for you to last for 30 years. You know, it's going to chip away at you. It's going to eat away at you if you are too idealistic. So uh, let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Now, the good thing about being realistic is it helps you be a little bit tougher. You, you need a little bit of a harder shell. Um, you don't need to get your feelings hurt so easy. You know, for example, if, if you are realistic, uh, you're going to realize that, you know, when students are mean to you or when parents, you know, get mad at you and stuff like that, that generally it's not personal. But at least you shouldn't take it as personal because what you're going to realize is over years and years and years of, of doing this job, uh, you know, kids are going to come in there day in and day out, and it doesn't matter whether they're elementary school or, or high school age. Uh, they're going to have bad days, or they're going to have a bad home life, or they're going to have a chip on their shoulder, or they didn't get enough sleep last night, or something. And uh, or maybe they're just they're just a mean kid, you know. Maybe they're just mean, and they go in there every day and they give you a hard time, or they say something ugly to you, or they you know whatever mouth off and. Um, and if you're too idealistic and you're so worried about me, this, this, I want these students to love me and I want my, you know, they're not all going to love you. Uh, you know, there's nothing in the world you can do to make all those students love them. You know, this is not going to happen. So if they do say something ugly or they do say something, you know, do what you're supposed to do, you know, uh, address it in whatever way you're supposed to address it that's appropriate for that discipline level or whatever, and then move on. Don't sit there and dwell on it. Uh, I mean, I've had teachers, I had a teacher come into my office one time, and she was probably a 25-year veteran teacher, and she was just crying and bawling and, and, and just so distressed because this, this one student kept giving her a hard time. And she was like, I think he just spends, you know, 24 hours a day trying to think of, thinking of ways to make my life miserable. And I was thinking, you know, this is a 13-year-old kid. He probably don't think of you five seconds during the day. He just comes in there and does what he does. And it's nothing personal. He just, you know, he's just acting the way he acts. And if you let that get to you, um, it's a long career. And you're going to run across a lot of students that, for whatever reason, don't like you. Or, and you just have to press on. And the way I looked at it was I have bigger fish to fry. Than to sit here and fret and worry about, you know, uh, some kids 
anger, you know, at the world, you know, or whatever. I, I have to keep doing, I have more classes to teach. I have more students I have to deal with. I have more things I have to do. And if you let that eat at you, because something like that's going to happen every day, you know, you're going to have a colleague that you don't get along with. You're going to have, you know, an administrator that you think doesn't like you or that you don't like or whatever. You can't, it can't be personal. It's got to be, you got to look at it like this is a business. This is, a, you know, like I told you, this is an educational bureaucracy. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things going and the show must go on. I'm not going to let one little thing eat at me. Okay. So you, you can't take everything personally. If, if you're realistic and not so idealistic is it will help you uh, kind of block out the noise of everything going on around you. Uh, or as you're going through your career, there's a lot of outside things that you can't worry about. Um, you know, all the stuff in the news media. Uh, you just got to block all that out because you can watch one channel and, you know, they, they act like the whole educational system is, you know, completely turning liberal and they're doing all these things that are, you know, they're promoting all these ideas that are bad for America. And then you'll listen to another news media and they'll talk about how conservative uh, school districts are banning books and doing all that, you know. There's going to be all kind of things that they're going to say about education that promotes their agenda. Um, you know, they're going to they're going to try to take the money from uh, public schools and give it to the private schools. They're going to they're going to try to make it where, you know, the public schools have to, you know, follow the there. All this stuff's going to be going on. And it's a lot of political stuff. And you got to block all that out because you got a job to do. You have a, you got to teach math. You know, you got to teach history. You got to teach whatever. If you get your feelings hurt because um, social media is down on education and down on teachers and all that kind of stuff, you just have to shut all that out. Because if you're realistic, you realize that not every school district in the United States is doing the things that they're talking about on the media. Not every teacher in the United States is doing the things that they talk about what teachers are doing on the media or in social media. Uh, you know, you'll get on there and, you know, some parent will be going off about, you know, my child's teacher did this and nobody did anything about it. And they're targeting my son, you know, and, and you're sitting here and you're looking at it. And sometimes it might be something that's going on at, at your school and you know it's not true or whatever. And you just have to be able to say, you know what? They got a right to say whatever they want, and I got to go. I got to press on. You know, it's it, again. You can't let that uh, get onto you. You got to shut all that stuff out because it's going to be out there. There's going to be people in the community that don't like what's happening at your school. There, you know, some of them don't like what you're doing. Some of them don't like what's. And then sometimes stuff will happen, and it's true. You know, it is bad. Bad things will happen at your school, and. You know, again, you still have a job to do. You can't get caught up in all that. You can't worry about how the public perceives school teachers. You got to shut out all the noise in your school where the teachers, you know, might be gossiping about something or they might be whatever. You, you can't get involved in all that kind of stuff. Shut out the noise and focus on what matters, the teaching. The way I always looked at it was I'm going to have a job. As long as I do my job, I'm going to have a job. I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get to retirement and I'm not going to let all this other stuff get me off track. The other thing being realistic does is it helps you understand that, that teachers and people in education are human beings. And you might think, well, that's obvious. Of course they're human beings. Yeah, but you need to treat them like they are human beings. And that means when they make mistakes, and they're going to, you can't, you know just crucify them for everything they do wrong. You got to have a little bit of understanding. You know, you got to have a little bit of understanding that your students are human beings. They're going to make mistakes. And a lot of people, they, especially the media and uh, the public, 
likes to look at teachers and they want, what they want is teaching machines that never make a mistake. And they don't want to forgive a mistake. They want to magnify the mistake, show it all over the news, show it, you know, it's mistakes are going to happen. People are going to mess up. You're going to have a principal that you think is fantastic and then you're going to turn around and you're going to find out, man, they were doing something wrong and, and you can't let that derail your career. Don't put all your, you know, faith and, and, and idealism in people because people are, are just human beings. And there's going to be a lot of things that happen that's going to make you really disappointed in people. So focus on the teaching, okay? On the kids, on your class. Focus on that. Don't 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 get all caught up in in people because they're going to mess up, and you're going to mess up, and you can't be so hard on yourself that when you make a mistake, um, that you just give up, okay? Or that you can't own up that you did the wrong thing. You know, you're gonna you're a human. You mess up. Own it and move on. Um, and you know, there's I'm telling you, there's going to be kids out there. They're going to, everything you do now, somebody's videoing it. You know, kids are going to be videoing you in class, trying to get you to do things, to get you, you know, to say a word you shouldn't say or get you off track, you know, stuff like that. And just realize that, that people are always watching you. Everything you're doing on social media is being seen. Um, you know, people are, are looking at you all the time. And you are a human being. And you have to understand that I really have to, I can't just do whatever, okay? I really have to focus on what I'm doing all the time. I really have to be professional. Uh, but it's as professional as I can be. I'm going to make mistakes. Other people are going to make mistakes. Another thing being realistic is going to do is it's going to help you understand that, you know, what I want and what students want and what parents want and what administrators want, it's all different. And, and don't get wound up if it doesn't match up. Again, your job in the classroom is to teach. Don't let the other stuff get you off that focus. No matter what happens outside of these walls um, of my classroom, in my classroom, that's the part that I control, okay? Uh, I can't control the outside things that the kids bring in. I can't control what happens to them at home. I can't, but what, what, what is going on in my room, that's what I need to be able to control. That's where your focus needs to be. Now, of course, you do need to be concerned about politics. You do need to vote. You do need to, you know, stand for the things that are important to you. But in the classroom, you get you got to block all that other stuff out. You know, you, you're too idealistic, and you go in there and you think, man, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to be like one of those, you know, people they make movies about, you know, that are about these teachers that do all these amazing things or whatever. Uh, you know, there's a reason they made a movie about that because that, you know, that person's like a one in a million kind of teacher, <laughs> that kind of thing. And if you go into it and that's just got to be how you're going to, you know, be realistic, you know, it's just like a kid that's going, uh, you know, he's playing baseball and, and, and when he's a little kid and he's like, you know what, I'm going to break the home run record when I'm a, well, he might, you know, there's a chance, but uh, not a good one. <laughs> there's not a good chance of making it to the big leagues, things like that. you got to be realistic. Uh, and I'm not saying lower your expectations. You need to be the absolute best you can be. And if you're one of those all-star teachers that they're going to make movies about, hey, that's fantastic. You're one, you know, uh, those kind of people usually are really idealistic. But most people that are super idealistic and think um, every kid's going to love me, I'm going to love all these kids, I'm going to change their lives and all this kind of stuff, um, they burn out pretty quick. They, they find out pretty quick the real, you know, thing that is going on in education. And you got to have a balance. you got to make the best impact you can to the most kids that you can and, you know, focus on it that way. What is, what is the best thing I can do? And if you're realistic, you realize you don't get wound up if you can't do every single thing. You, you, you pick the things that are most important. You prioritize the things that realistically that you can do. And uh, you're the best at that that you can be. And you get the most out of your career. You get the most out of, you know, the kids in your class. You get the, the no child left behind thing. 
that's the most idealistic thing in the history of the planet. There's no way. If you're an educator and you're a person in, ed in, in administration and you're a person that has any experience in education, that every single child is just, and that sounds like a horrible thing to say, but realistically, you know, it, it's impossible. Now, it's a great goal. And we should strive for that goal. Man, I want every single kid in my class to pass. I'm going to do everything I can to help. But despite your best efforts, sometimes it's, it doesn't work out. And uh, you can't, you know, you can't be a person that it doesn't bother at all. Like, oh, well, you know, survival of the fittest. You can't be like that. But you can't be where, you know, you're going to lose sleep every single night because you had one student that didn't pass you have to be balanced okay so idealism versus realism if you can strike a balance there and um, you can get a good understanding of, of what you can do and you can't do and you can live with that then you can make it for 30 years so uh, anyway thanks for watching guys there's tons of things that I could talk about with idealism and realism because that was one of the biggest battles I saw in education was the idealistic people versus the realistic people. And you can't be too much of either one. And it's got to be practical. It's got to work in a classroom. So figure out how it works for you. And if you can strike that balance, you can do it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.